Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to go. Okay, my love, I have put everything that I offer for free on one page so that we are not doing more work than we have to because why would we do that? Hashtag work smarter, not harder. So livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. You are going to find everything I've created for not only leveling up in your personal life and building a life that you love, but leveling up in your business life and building a business that you love. Okay livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. Love you. Hi. Hey. Dude, it is good to see you. How are you? I'm good. It's, I'm losing my voice a little bit, so. <laughs> but I'm so good. How's life been? It's been really good. We are loving it here in Nashville. Uh, it's been so good to be close to family and um and my parents are literally like you turn out of our neighborhood and they're 10 minutes down the road so I love that. Uh, yeah it's it's been really good um yeah finally getting settled in our house and Cute. slowly but surely preparing for baby boy so a whole baby yeah. which is crazy because help here and like 15 weeks <laughs> yeah so it blows my mind yeah, you're gonna be so precious as a mom I can't wait I'm so excited <laughs> I, yeah I can just imagine your family being like well you'll never see this kid because we have him all the time thank you goodbye <laughs> this is our child you birthed him but this is our child right oh cute so one hi I am so stoked to talk to you And two, the thought behind this kind of like series is like so many people don't know what therapy is like, or they've had like a crappy experience with therapists. And I, you know, that bad therapists and make me particularly angry (laughs) or like, because people don't know, right? Like they don't know the, the process or how it ideally should go. Um, and I was like, okay, well, what better way? For people to learn about the process than to talk to people who have gone through the process right. and who are like thriving. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, so if you would uh, kind of start maybe with like, I don't remember how you found me, but how you found me and then your past experience and then we'll launch into your experience with me. Yeah. Um, so I actually found you through my insurance because I was like dealing with, I mean, just a lot at the time and, uh, waited probably way longer than I should have to help because I did previously have a bad experience and I wasn't super thrilled. I, was such an advocate for therapy, but for everyone else, but myself. (laughs) So I uh, remember having a conversation with my brother who was going through a hard time. And I was just like trying to encourage him to talk to someone and, and basically don't hold it all in. You know, you, you (laughs) need help. It's good to seek help. And then I was just like, okay, wow. I <laughs> listened to my own advice. Um, so I searched through my insurance at the time and I found a few, but I am such a like visual person that I was like looking up pictures of all of these people. Yeah, <laughs> and I was I would I too. See what you look like? Do you look nice? Do you look fun and cool? Um, and so I saw I found your website and saw a picture of you and kind of read about you and like what you are about. And I was like, 
yep, this one, this, 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 this this one's, (laughs) I really wanted something that wasn't like traditional sit on a couch, you know, because that was kind of where my bad experience came from. And it was very intimidating. And for me, at least, it just felt like I was in trouble. Uh, <laughs> and so I was just yeah. like, like, I need something that's a little bit, you know, outside the box, something that's a little bit different. And the thought of being able to just be outside was mm-hmm definitely something that pulled me in right off the bat because I was like okay first of all this is already just different you Mm know um and so I was very I was still very nervous and hesitant at first uh and then I met you and I was like oh yeah no this is this is my lady this will be fine (laughs) this will do (laughs) it's mine now Um, so yeah. And I, my previous experience, um, I suffered from anxiety and depression probably even way earlier than I even thought, but really noticed it in, um, in high school, uh, probably in 2015, um, My sister and I were super close and she left for college. And so it was kind of a moment that was like, who am I? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do I, you know, what do I do? And um, that's when a lot of it, I think, really surfaced. And that was around the time that I feel like people in my area were discussing mental health. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just like this thing that like anxiety and worry are different things. Mm -hmm. Like worry is something that you, you can practice uh, driving if you're worried about it and then you'll feel better. You know, anxiety is usually rational. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, it, it was something that was being talked about more, but at the time I just, I didn't really understand, you know, the, the way it can affect people. Mm deeply um until I had a friend just flat out say I think you have anxiety and I was (laughs) what me like no no everyone everyone feels paralyzed and throws up from worry yeah has this feeling where you know they'll randomly feel like something bad's gonna happen out of nowhere and and so that kind of was like a little bit of a wake up call of oh okay so I guess like I guess maybe I do <laughs> mm. have you know maybe a little bit more than just your regular old worry. Um, and so some big events in life happened. We adopted my youngest brother. Um, we had five days to decide, you know, if we wanted another kid, that was a really big thing. Um, our house flooded that year. So there was just like a lot that went yeah. into here that I think kind of brought it on. Um, I was probably the worst that I'd ever been. I don't, I don't really remember a whole lot of that time. I think my brain was like, yeah, we're just gonna, Block that out and that sucked. You know. <laughs> We're not really that. <laughs> and truthfully, like a lot of it was because I wasn't really getting out of bed. I wasn't mm-hmm. doing things that brought me life. I wasn't spending time with people. I was isolating. There was just a lot mm-hmm. that looking back, I'm like, I I I seriously needed more than, you know, nobody knew really at the time. Mm-hmm. Like it it was just at the time where therapy was becoming like not a shameful thing oh yeah yeah. like more normalized right and so uh my parents were like well maybe I think you should go talk to someone we found this woman you know she went to the college they went to that I ended up going to and so I was like okay I, I reluctantly agreed um and at first it was fine. It really wasn't, but I also was sugarcoating everything. Mm. You know? <laughs> I was not the kind of person who would just sit and like 
word vomit all of the stuff going on I was just like things are okay you know they're good Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm feeling a little bit you know and so truthfully didn't really set her up to succeed either (laughs) because we can't like we can't help if people are giving us 30 percent it's like well I can help 30 percent but like I need you to tell me how actually bad it is or how yeah what things really are I was not giving her uh, giving her enough to work with whatsoever. (laughs) Um, and then it got to a point where, uh, something happened where I, um, didn't really remember it because of it just being something that caused me so much anxiety Mm. that I, I was like telling her about it. I was like, she was asking me all these questions and that's where it kind of felt like it turned into an interrogation Mm. where she was like, well, why don't you remember? Are you, were you drunk? Were you high? Like Mm. going like, and it wasn't even like a, like we didn't really, we didn't, we hadn't built a relationship. Like, yeah. So it didn't feel like curiosity. It felt like, no, there was no, yeah, there was no like relationship of, okay, so uh, walk me through it, you know, what? Oh, yeah. And it was just like, and again, I was 16 at yeah, the time. younger than, yeah. And, and I didn't know how to really form my words to express mm-hmm. things at all. Um, and so I, just remember sitting there saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, no, I wasn't drunk. No, I wasn't high, you know? And in my mind, I was like, you're a therapist. Like, don't you know that traumatic things can cause you to not really remember details well? Or, you know, what's really bananas is like, I'm part of a, like a couple of groups on Facebook with that, like our therapist. And they'll be like, oh, I need someone who specializes in trauma for this. And I'm like, how are you a therapist and you don't specialize in trauma? Like it, that, it, I don't understand it. Cause I'm like, that's all we do. Right. Like, yeah. what do you mean you need someone who handles trauma? What do you do? What, right. do you, what do you mean? Do you work with people's feet? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. You said it makes no sense to me. Keenan. <laughs> so it's uh, like, yes, they, she, Every therapist, in my opinion, should be well versed in trauma because hello, every has it. <laughs> like, hello, what do you think we do all day? And there's so many different levels of it where, no. like, people, you just you're gonna have it. Like life, right. like things are overwhelming to a system. So, right. So we didn't love that, and then you were like, okay, probably. So I, at that point, uh, after that session, um, it was like right near Christmas time. And so we were in a break for a while and I basically just extend the break (laughs) myself. You're good now. Like Mm -hmm. you're fine. Yeah. You don't need to go back. That's not helpful. (laughs) Um, And so Christmas time I would basically was like you got to put on a face that's gonna make Mm -hmm. your people believe that you're fine yeah so because I'm 16 at the time they're like very worried about me yeah um I was homeschooled up until college so like I'm around I'm at home a lot you know um and so they after Christmas I was like you know what like I don't really feel like I need to go back. Like, I think I'm okay. (laughs) Yeah. And part of it was just truthfully because it was not helpful for me. That Mm -hmm. therapy was not helpful, but I also wasn't educated enough in therapy to say, Hey, I think we should find someone else. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. And I find a lot of that heavy lifting ideally is on the therapist to say like, Hey, if we're not jamming, Right. We're not doing anything wrong. Sometimes the people just aren't for you. Like there's a ton of people who would not ever in life do well with me. Right. Yeah. Ever and, in life. And I think part of it was I was this like moody 16 year old where she was like, like 
we're gonna we're gonna get there we're gonna be good but it was it was it was so yeah and it didn't feel like real to me like we weren't just talking you know it wasn't really it didn't feel welcoming to me you know and so there was a lot of things that I was just like yeah no I will not do that again you know (laughs) This so what is, was it like then moving from that into working with me? Because people, if this is their first episode, then they don't know, but they'll learn in about five seconds that like, I was, I have always been pretty unprofessional. Like if you think of professionals like Jackie O, corporate, whatever, like I have quite literally never fit in with that vibe. And then it's like, oh, turns out that that actually no, is a I gift. Th- right. And I think that is what was that's what I needed because the sit down on a couch that is not comfortable. (laughs) We do have comfortable couches. (laughs) Have her sit up and you have so many dogs and animals and blankets and it's it's cozy. But um, she was sitting across from me with like a notepad and like very like, I like it felt like I was in some like clinical trial or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, so talk to me, what's going on? You know, it was, it it was so different. Yeah. Um, So my first session with you, I remember I was a wreck. I was literally throwing up every day from anxiety and uh, just not in a good place. Um, And I remember sitting down and uh, you were just super straightforward with me. Like, all right, so this is kind of how things work. Like if we don't vibe, we don't vibe like, but let's, let's just see how we do, you know? And we talked for a little bit and I remember, I mean, that first session, like, isn't, it's basically like intake, you know, you get all the, you get all the, you know, the vibes. What's your history? Yeah. Here's how I work. No. And I remember leaving and being like, okay, yeah, like, I think, I think this is going to be different. Um, And pretty much from there on was just like, oh, thank God I have therapy. (laughs) (laughs) Like it, it just, the atmosphere is so different because we're, we were typically outside Mm -hmm. surrounded by animals. Paco was usually in my lap. Um, Literally. Literally love him. (laughs) And we just talked, but there was also a goal in mind. Like when I left that session, I remember, or bef- like right as soon as we were about to end, you're like, okay, so like, what are our, what are our main goals here? Like, what are, what are we searching for? What do we want? And the number one goal was to stop throwing up every day. Which congrats. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and no pregnancy but totally different reasons yeah well pregnancy is different right but um but yeah it we I felt like there was more of a clear cut like this is what we are working towards Mm -hmm. and there were so many like outside the box things that were helpful for me like uh the metaphor of like your life is a spiral staircase you're gonna keep passing by a window that's full of all of the easy things in life Mm -hmm. you're also gonna pass by a window of all of the really sucky hard things but you're gonna keep going you're always going up but you're just Mm -hmm. continuing to circle around because that's life and that something that was really helpful because I would feel like I would, you know, have a really hard week and I'd be like, oh, back to square one. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not how there is no square one. You're never there again. Yeah. And you're, you're actively working, which means you're doing, you're moving forward. And yeah. that was really helpful. And, and there, it, it is not like I sat there and was just like so you know Amanda is just this 
you know, goddess, you know, I mean, I did say, <laughs> which is so rude of you. <laughs> I did say that, but, but there were times I left and I was like, how dare she say that to me? And then I would get home and I would be like, she's so right. <laughs> like it, it, the kind of therapy that I needed of someone who we built a relationship, we would talk about the, good things, the bad things, you were encouraging, you always hyped me up, but you also told me the truth. Mm -hmm. That I think was what I needed at that time because I mean, and it was never like, you're messed up, you know, (laughs) like, like, but it was just like, Hey, like maybe, maybe that is, Maybe that is right, you know. Maybe, and maybe it, this part is you, and then everyone's like, "Ew, gross, never." Yeah, <laughs> which and, I also do, right? If someone's like, "Amanda, this is you," I'm like, "How dare you? I'm a perfect angel." <laughs> like, right, no. <laughs> right. No. but but I'm all of, of that helped me like process through, and you know, be like, "It's me." Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> oh, right. Because sometimes it is us, right? Like we're yeah. coming to the table always with things that we learned and ways that we survived and ways that we learned to navigate. And sometimes the ways that we learn to navigate through necessity no yeah. longer yeah. serve us. And it's like, okay, but we can just grow from that. Yeah. I feel like if a client is never annoyed with you as a therapist, like you're not actively right. You supporting gotta them. You gotta poke the barrel you know right sometimes you gotta be like it is you (laughs) like right we can learn different and that's okay because if you have someone who is just uh, yes they're the problem it's never you it's that how are you gonna have growth from that how are you it's not true yeah no it's it's never gonna be true because there's going to be something that is you (laughs) like and at least one thing if you're you and I right. who are so close to perfect really. Right. <laughs> but you also like that I think that relationship that is built first is it matters. Yeah, it's why it it it's why I heard you. Mm, because yeah. we had this relationship where I wasn't like, okay, this random lady is just telling me right. I'm a problem. Right. We, like I tell I tell the girls when we like do supervision, I'm like I say this facetiously, but I actually do mean it. I'm like, if you're useful enough, so I'm like talking to the girls, I'm like, you can say anything, anything, and they will consider it or believe it. Because I'm like, if I've been useful for 20 hours for six months, then there's a pretty strong track record of being useful. So then it's like, it's so much easier for clients to say like, oh, okay, well, she's been useful thus far. So right. why would it suddenly take a left turn now? Why would she suddenly be mean or have like mean feedback or whatever now? And like the intention has always and is always, has always been and will always be like to be helpful. Right. So yeah. it's like, if I'm saying, you know, you're treating a bear like a puppy here and people are like, oh no, I'm not. It's like, but I've been right every other time <laughs> or I've been pretty close. Right. So like, pretty yeah. solid evidence says that like there's some there's a nugget of what I'm saying that is true right right yeah and but I, the relationship is paramount always yeah and I mean the one thing that just I think after that first session that kept me coming back because I I kind of told myself all right I'm gonna go to one yeah that you know and I did but you were just yourself there was no professional like facade that you like blanketed over yourself that you're like oh well she'll see the real me later yeah it was very much like okay so this is kind of how I roll you know and it was like a very quick you know we talked about yeah. kind of little nuggets of things but I was just like okay yeah you know well, I, think- I think it's like we're asking people to be so brave and so vulnerable and so open and then like 
like if I were trying to be a professional, everyone would be like, you fake bitch. <laughs> There's just no way. But like if we're asking people to be completely open and then right. we're not being authentic, it's like, yeah, that creates a barrier there, which is not to say like, you know, everything about my life, right? That's not necessarily vulnerability, but like being authentic, like this is who I am. This is how I work. If this doesn't jam with you, okay, but then yeah. let's find someone who but is I'm, a better fit for you. Yeah. And, and I, like you still gave me things about yourself that made me feel like mm-hmm. we were acting yeah. without being like, here's my life story. <laughs> Everything I go through every day, you know, right. I, I always say that, like, I'm a person who really, like, craves the vulnerability of mm. people to feel like I don't do well with the surface level conversation. Yeah. How's the weather? Like, I will most likely forget that we had a conversation. Oh, right. If, but it's if we share to each other, you know, Mm -hmm. what's going on in our lives, or you tell me a story about, you know, the animals on the farm that day where like, Mm -hmm. I feel I've, I've seen a a piece of, Mm -hmm. and that I think was really helpful for me in being able to open up and Mm -hmm. share because I felt like I did have, some sort of connection relationship there it wasn't just a okay you're gonna go talk to this stranger about your problems (laughs) right and I I think it's nice too because it's like very it humanizes right like so one of the ways that I run therapy that is not uh what's taught is that like there's no yes there is an inherent power differential as in like someone is obviously you're paying me I'm not paying you But as far as like human goes, like I'm not actually the expert in your life. You are. I have frameworks and education and thoughts, but like I'm not the expert. Like I'm just a human trying my best to help, but I don't know better than you. Right. You have the knowledge of how to then take the things I'm dealing with Mm -hmm. and help structure and help me. Yeah build these goals and because when you're in the deep pit of anxiety depression whatever you're going through it can feel like the last thing possible for you to do is to reach a goal yeah and one of the things that we talked about was okay so add things that you've already done to your to-do list literally so helpful (laughs) do that like like woke up check yeah (laughs) make the bed drink a cup of coffee things that you know but it helps you feel like you've accomplished Mm -hmm. and then gives you that okay I can do this I can reach this and you know having those baby goals first to reach before you get to that like big um but like we we made those okay so our goal tomorrow is to not throw up. <laughs> Love it. And that was all, you know, there wasn't like you have to not throw up and then you have to go and write in your journal about how, you know, like, yeah. it was just like, okay, so let's just try not to do that tomorrow. And, yeah. you know, and I, th- those kinds of things were super helpful to me as someone who felt like, there's no way this is going to end. There's no, yeah. this time's going to, you know, but having those practices where truthfully, I don't know if my previous experience with a therapist, like truthfully, I'm like, it did, was I even in therapy? Because it, <laughs> what, it didn't feel like that. There was no, there weren't goals. There weren't, you know, it it just it was okay. I don't understand that. Yeah, and and so I, I would literally would tell everyone about you, and like <laughs> it would be it would be a point where like people are like oh so like you you don't mind telling people who your therapist is? I'm like no, please go see her. 
Please no, but you need her too. <laughs> Please, she's the best. And yeah. uh I mean, it works a few times. So uh. Yeah. Well, and I think it's so fun. And like something I notice is like one, most therapists don't teach anything. So I'm like, what do you do with your time? Like I literally I don't understand I don't know what they do. Like, aren't you bored? Don't you want to help? <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't get it. I would be so bored if I just sat and listened to people. I just don't have the patience. I'm like, can we just fix this shit? Like, can, let's just, I don't understand. The wall all day long. It's like, go talk to a horse in a field. They're free. Okay. <laughs> like, they're literally free. Right. Probably better company, at least then you're outside. So, <laughs> so that's always been confusing to me. I'm like, what do you, what do these other therapists do with their time? I don't know. And the cool thing is because I teach skills. People then teach other people. Right. So it's, like, it's such a natural thing where like you want people to be happy. So then if you see someone struggling, you're like, oh, well, this won't last forever because right yeah. now you're on the South side and it's swampy, but then you'll be on the North side and the North side is sunshine and rainbows. And like, it is cyclical. And then people are like, oh my God. And you're like, yeah, great. I'm so smart. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, like you're just the lighthouse for other people. And it's so cool to watch. Yeah. And it's so fun to be like, to be able to be like, oh my gosh, listen to this thing I just learned. And it's helped me so much. Like even things that people have heard before, Mm -hmm. but playing in a different way, Mm -hmm. you know, like my dad has always, always, always said, you can't give what you don't have. And I heard that my entire life. But it never really resonated with me until you told me about the spoon theory. I love spoon theory. You can't, you can't, you can't give. If you have no spoons, you can't give yeah, them to people. You can't give people spoons. Or if it takes all of your spoons to get out of bed in the day, mm-hmm. at the day then that's it. You're running on negative spoons at that point. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so. You know, having that mindset of, okay, so what adds spoons back to my life? What gives me, you know, gives me things back to then, you know, pour out. And that, that metaphor, that theory, that helped me really process something I'd heard my entire life. (laughs) But it hadn't clicked yet. Yeah. Yeah. It hadn't, hadn't clicked. So even the things that, like people here, you, you know, right. But there it's the having the skills, knowing your client to be able to explain things in a way that they get, they click, you know? And I think that like is something that you do super well. Um, and I I was going to say at the beginning, this is going to be like, uh, I'm going to just literally sit here and just hype you up this whole time. Oh, thanks. It's it's interesting that these interviews, like they're, they're kind of sprinkled throughout, and I'm just like, oh my god, my ego loves this. <laughs> right. But also, like, it's I think it's helpful for people. One, because you've fired me for a while now. Yeah. And I I want people to get that, like, when therapy is skills centered, the skills don't go away. Like, right. it's not like so. Some people will be like, oh god, like I have to be in therapy forever, and it's like. If you're in therapy forever, like your therapist sucks, please find someone else. Like literally, well, and there's no improvement. Like, please right. find someone else. Like some people are like, oh, I just like having this space once a month to like come decompress. And I'm like, yes, that's totally different than like you're struggling for 10 years and it right. hasn't changed. Like either you're not being honest with your therapist or your therapist doesn't know how to teach skills. Right. So, you know, what you learn doesn't go away. You just yeah. use it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's better. And there, I mean, there are times when I struggle and I have hard sure, weeks. Because life be life Yeah. But now I'm more capable to navigate that because my skill set is different. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, <laughs> I remember uh, when we were nearing the end of me seeing you. We were virtual at the time because we, mm. I didn't know we would be staying in Tennessee at the time. And I was just, you know, like, okay, well, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. 
And I remember we went from every week to two weeks to once a month. And then it was becoming hard for me to find things to talk to you about because <laughs> dealing with life. It was great. Yeah, I was just doing doing life, doing my thing. Right. I was figuring it out. And I remember in our last session, I was like telling you all these things and you literally didn't even get to talk because I was telling you about how I solved the problem mm -hmm. or how I, you know, and then you were like, um, I think you're good. <laughs> and I was like, what? No, don't leave. <laughs> And so you're like, like yeah. no, for real, like you're, you're good. You're and good. that right. was so like, oh my gosh, you know what? Like the struggle to find these things that I need help with or processing or whatever, that means I'm, I'm doing it on my own. And I'm, I'm cooking. Yeah. yeah. And that was like a. I remember my favorite thing that like week was to be like, yeah, my therapist made me fire her. <laughs> and, what? Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, thriving. Like, I'm thriving. <laughs> I went to, so I started doing jujitsu, um, which right. has been so fun and so annoying because I'm, I'm not perfect at it yet. And I'm like, I want to be really good. So I'm like, oh, cool. Here's a weird mindset block that I have. Well, that's fine. And I was telling, I went one night and I had a client fire me and I was like, oh guys, I got fired tonight. And they were like, oh no. I don't think everyone there like remembers that I work for myself. So like, I'm not firing me, but a client fired me. I was like, oh, yeah, a client fired me. They're like, oh no, that's a so sad. And I was like, no, I want them to fire me. Like, that's, that's the point. And they were like, oh, okay. Well, in that case, congrats. And I'm like, thanks. They're thriving. It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean that, I mean, the language of that is so... I mean, I say it to be a little dramatic, like it's just fun for me. That's, that's literally why uh, the way I would say it, I would strategically say it on purpose. So then people will be like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, no, it's because I'm bad. <laughs> right. Because I'm not bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> so you were really interesting because, because you grew up in, your dad is a preacher? Yeah, yeah. Pastor. Yeah. Okay. There's a difference though. Um, so yeah, I mean, the way I always think about it is a preacher is someone who get up, gets up there and gives a sermon and okay. a pastor is someone who, yeah, still gives a sermon, but does life with people. Oh, good. So pastor for your done. So yeah. you were interesting because your husband does that as well. Yeah. We love him. And so we talked so much about how their has been and still continues to be often a mistrust of therapy, a dismiss dismissal of like dealing with mental health using professionals mm -hmm. um, in like the church world. And I remember like that was something we talked about so often with that you really stood on that was like, you can do both. Like you can have a relationship to God, you can lead a church, you can be in a church, like you can do all those things and do therapy. Like, and, please, please do both. Please <laughs> do both, right? Like, like if well, praying about it is not working, we may want we may, some extra you know, support. My dad um, has always said he believes in uh, therapy and doctors and he's like, if you broke your arm, so say you have all of these, these things mentally that you're struggling with and you broke your arm, are you just going to pray that God fixes it? Or are you going to go to the hospital and get it set? Right. You're going to go get it set. Um, and you're going to then heal correctly at that point. And it's the same thing with your brain, your mind, all of these these mental illnesses yeah you can pray about it that's great right. if something that you need to do but there also is a point where you should probably seek some professional help yeah. and 
Um, something, uh, kind of a metaphor that Evan was even talking about the other day was that, um, if you don't have that arm set correctly, it's going to have to be rebroken to fix it. Mm. And that's not going to be fun. (laughs) So why wouldn't you start from the beginning to, you know, try to do this correctly. Right. And, uh, and I and, think it's like a fundamental misunderstanding of what therapy is, which is why like one of the reasons I'm doing this series is like people don't understand what it is. So they'll be like, oh, well, I talk to my friends. I talk to my pastor. I talk to my preacher. I talk to my husband about it or my wife or my partners. And it's like, that's not the same thing as someone like rewiring your brain and your nervous system. Like they're, but then a lot of therapists don't know how to rewire things. And so people are like, well, I go and I talk to my therapist about it. And it's like, okay, but if your therapist isn't, thank you, Katie, your therapist isn't teaching you skills, that's actually a huge part of the problem. Right. Yeah. Something mm-hmm. that had, um, he is very adamant about because people will say, well, can I, can I come talk to you? You know? And he's like, yes, absolutely. But I also want you to know that I can give you pastoral, I can give you pastoral advice, but I know where the line is on the help I can give to you. And then I'm going to recommend you to see someone else. Yeah. I admire that because Mm -hmm. I think, of pastors if you are not qualified or have the certifications in counseling and in therapy to do those things because some pastors do and that's great awesome yeah but if you don't you have to know where that line is otherwise and, like they really risk harming people right right and it's like my, my dad's like i'm i know that I can't fix this for you. Yeah. And it's gonna be, you know, but if you need a, an ear to listen, I'm sure. I'm here. Yeah. But I, I also know that I can't provide you advice that's gonna fix things. Right. And it's yeah. not it's not advice, right? Like what we do is not give advice. Now there's probably are there times where I'm like, I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a- Maybe not. <laughs> right. I encourage you not to do X, Y, Z. Right. But that's not, even then it's like, sure, that's like guidance, but advice is like, you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And it's like, that's right. also not what therapy is where it's like, here are your options. You could do cocaine about it. You could sleep for three months about it. You could face it head on and work through it. You can right. stand in the middle of the road at 3 a.m. about it. Like, here are the options. And then choose what you want to do. So it's like, it's always the client's decision. Even if sometimes I'm like, that is the most boneheaded decision. Like, you're like, you're going to circle back in a week and be like, yep, okay. that's- see you next <laughs> week. Like this is your choice in your dream. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious then about like, what are the things, frameworks, nuggets, systems that were like the most helpful for you? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, I kind of mentioned a few. Um, mm-hmm. The spiral staircase was one that was super helpful for me that I still think about and tell people about. Um, the spoons, that was super helpful for me um, because that never stops. Whether you're, right. whether you're in the best place of your life, mm-hmm. You still only have so much energy in a day. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had to give myself a lot of grace recently because I don't have the same amount of energy that I did. Right. Your energy is directed towards growing a human. That's true. And so I've had to give myself a lot of grace because I'm like, oh, well, I had this list of things that I hoped to accomplish and I didn't do any of them. And I literally sat on the couch and just rotted away all day. And that, but that's okay. I sat there 
and I didn't do much. And, you know, Evan's been reminding me, he's like, you're, you are still doing something. You're right. Probably- you are doing <laughs> right. Literally. Yeah, but, but that's, you know, that has been something that has still helped me now in a season of my life that I wasn't in when mm-hmm. I was in there. Uh, and yeah, so truthfully, like I'd write down a list of things to talk about, to cover. Mm-hmm. And then I'd go down the list and I'd write things down, you know, as you're mm-hmm. writing. And so there, there are probably, I meant to look through my notes to see if I still had things uh, <laughs> that you say somewhere in there. That, forgot about that I still think about that I forgot was you well I think sometimes like they become so natural right like one of the things that really comes to mind for you was like boundaries with like people's opinions and just yeah people. Well, <laughs> it's like that's probably so natural now that you're like oh yeah what are boundaries they're just the thing that I like it's just my normal now no that's it's so true because I was trying to navigate learning how to be a pastor's wife. I've been a pastor's kid my whole life, yeah. but the realities were different. You know, the expectations people had on me were different, yeah. which I, it took a while for me to be like, you know what? I, I don't have to fit into this pastor's wife mold. I'm married to a pastor, which makes me a pastor's wife. <laughs> All right. And so navigating people's expectations and navigating opinions, like, yeah, so much you need to do when you're like, oh, that's actually not my problem. Right. I, and I came across a lot of that during our like 18 months. Yeah. Trial by fire. (laughs) Right. And and I, I really did have to let go of expectations that I was holding myself to, but other people had put on me. That like one of yours, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they were not something that was, it wasn't something that was my job, Mm -hmm. but I was holding on to that and felt like I needed to do X, Y, Z. And so the boundaries there, um, even just like communicating boundaries of, um, I've, I've always been someone who is very, very, I believe so strongly in communicating how you're feeling mm-hmm. what's on, you yeah. know, because people are not going to know, people yeah. aren't going to, you can't read your mind. Right. <laughs> um, and that was something that I struggled with during that time, mm-hmm. especially because I felt like I just needed to hold it all together. Mm-hmm. And I communicate, well, you know what? I'm actually, I'm struggling or I'm not having right now. (laughs) Which is so wild because it's such a permission giver, right? Like when people are in positions of authority and they're like, hey, I'm not perfect. Like I'm human too and doing my best. Then everyone's like, oh, thank God I can also stop pretending. Right. And so nice. Which is funny that I even had that in my mind because my dad and my husband both as human are so great. (laughs) <laughs> and they lead these, they, they lead so transparently, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't know where that came from. You know, why did I hold that? It's a different socialization. Yeah. Different. And, and I think previous, you know, especially expectations that they had on previous, um, pastors, wives that kind of transferred over to me yeah. that I had to then say, Hey, I'm so glad that she did that. Yeah. But that is not me. I but I will not that. be doing that. <laughs> I will not be doing that. I will not and, be doing that. Thank you, though. Yeah. And so the boundaries, but also communicating the boundaries mm-hmm. of, um, hey, you stepped over a line here. You know, yeah. that's, you know, yeah. it's not it. And <laughs> this is not the vibe and we, we live for a vibe. <laughs> yeah. And. Yeah, there, I mean, I still, like, tell, I'm like, yeah, my therapist, I'm like, well, she's, I guess, I mean, she's still mine, but, like, <laughs> I don't her anymore. Yeah, cute. So. so, if, if people um are maybe thinking about therapy or had a bad experience or are just, just people listening, um, what would you like them 
to remember. Let's say they got short-term amnesia and they forgot everything we just said. What do you want them to know? Um, I would say if you are contemplating whether or not to seek some sort of mental help, um, just go once and see how it goes. And if you don't vibe, find someone else. Like, it is totally okay to, like, if, if you have a bad doctor, are you going to keep seeing a bad doctor? No, you're going to find another doctor, <laughs> you know, find someone that you click with because that really is the crucial piece in growth and in moving forward. Um, and the things that worked for me may not work for everybody else. And that's okay. Too. But find someone who you feel like pushes you to reach the goals you've set. Um, and I just, I mean, I think everybody would love you, but <laughs> but that's yeah. not true. <laughs> you can't be every lot of people would not. But if sitting in a room on a couch with someone sitting across from you with a notebook is your jam, do it. Oh my gosh, great. Yeah. Or if um, people need someone. So I like to say that like one, like the process of going through therapy or any type of like transformational work, either even working with a coach, things like that is like, it takes so much courage. But what I like to tell my clients is like, because I'm how I am, I'm like the normal process takes so much courage. But then to be a client of mine is like extra courage because like, I'm like, I, I care too much to let people be on their bullshit. Like I'm just, you want what you want. So like, you don't get to be a coward about it. So not only do people have like so much courage to go through it, they then deal with me <laughs> so by choice. Like, and <laughs> I'm like, okay, but that's like so much courage there. And it's just like, yeah. So I think, I think honestly, anyone that sees me because I'm, I can be, much more direct than like a normal person I'm just like okay like you have so much extra courage here like you're like I'm actually setting you up with so many more skills because you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome this halo is so heavy but but it's not untrue where like I'm not an easy person to be a client for because the respect and like the support the bullshit meter is just so low that yeah. I'm just like, no, like you want to live the life that you want. So like, why are let's you not fuck around here? <laughs> like, so just, yeah, you're getting yeah. in your, right. Yeah. So like kudos to anyone who sees me, honestly, to be like the process itself takes so much courage. And then I'm like, especially <laughs> to deal well, with me. But I think, I think especially me, I needed that because I needed the, the directness of hey you you don't want to do that but why what's the worst <laughs> that can happen right. like you're literally you know and then i we i'd be like well if so the worst that's going to happen is not really that bad and you're like uh, yeah exactly <laughs> so, <laughs> correct but <laughs> the, that question probably is is something that people don't mention but is so helpful is like especially people who like experience anxiety. It's like, what's the worst thing that happens? Oh, they won't like me. Okay, cool. You're not going to die about that. So like, right. Cool. I and then still like, Oh, still say that to people. I'm like, okay, so what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. And look at me. And I'm like, no, I seriously want you to answer. Like, literally answer the question. The worst that's going to happen. They're like, well, I mean, it's not actually going to be, I'm like, okay, so, and how are you going to deal with that? And <laughs> then, well, I guess, you know, and you're like, great. Okay. <laughs> so I, like I had a client who was afraid of flying and they were, and I was like well what's the worst that happens they're like oh the you know the plane xyz and I'm like no the worst thing that happens is the plane crashes like what what is this the food is bad on the airplane like no bitch you're you're afraid of the plane crashing and I was right. like well, what happens then and they're like I don't know I'm like well it's not your problem anymore <laughs> so like exactly yeah you have no problems now like, because yeah. you're dead yeah. so right. I'm like okay it's fine and they were like well yeah. And I'm like, okay, great. Now check the fear of flying. And they're like, well, it's way lower. And I'm like, right. Yeah. 
Well, and I think having someone who just knows how to talk through that with you. Literally. Usually they don't don't name their fears and then they're like, well, I don't know. And it's like, okay, but I mean, the worst that happens is that you die. And then it's like, okay, it's literally not your problem now. And, but usually people just go, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's not helpful. That's not helpful. Like, I'm not sorry for you. I just want to fix it. (laughs) Right. You're like, like, I hate that you're struggling with it, obviously, but I'm not like, oh, well, I'm so sorry you have anxiety. It's like, we can just make it go away. Yeah. Let's have a week of skills to deal instead of just crying about it. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Mic drop. Okay, dude, you, you're a doll. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm so glad you. you asked. I'm glad you agree. <laughs>